Okay, in this video we're going to graph quadratic equations by hand. We'll do these three, three examples, example one, example two, and example three. So let's start with example one. We have the equation y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. First of all, let's understand the vocabulary. Quadratic implies that we have, that the equation has an x squared term in it. Okay. Uh, equation, the word equation means that there is an, e it is an equation, there is an equal sign. So we have an equal sign, we have an x squared term, and that means it's a quadratic equation. Well, precisely, you know, um, this is the highest power of x, the x squared. So, I mean, if it was y equals x cubed something plus uh, 2x squared minus x or whatever, that, that's actually called a cubic equation. And there are other names for y equals x to the power of 4 is a quartic. And y equals, you know, something times x to the power of 5, etc. But if one of the terms is an x squared, if the highest power on x is squared, then the equation is called quadratic. So, in any case, to... Uh, graph this first we construct a input output table okay now we need to make up inputs to plug in for x and then calculate the y values so I guess I would suggest that you uh, plug in something like negative 3 negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 and 3 and calculate each one in turn and take your time so let's start with um, at the beginning. So we've got x squared minus 2x minus 3. So every, every time we see an x, we need to put in a parenthesis and then write squared. So it's parenthesis squared minus 2 times parenthesis minus 3. Okay. So in other words, when we plug in x is negative 3 into this equation, we just plug negative 3 in here and here. So it gets plugged into two places. Okay. And then... So you can go all the way down and write uh, the input squared minus 2 times the input minus 3 is what we need to calculate. So whatever the input is, squared minus 2 times that minus 3, the input squared minus 2 times the input minus 3, and so on. Input squared. So let's go ahead and do this first of all. All the way down the page. Please press pause on the video and fill this out if you haven't got it done yet. Now, basically, so when x is 0, for example, you plug in 0 here. And I'm going to start and calculate the, the 0 and the positives just because they're slightly easier. <clears throat> so 0 squared gives me 0. Negative 2 times 0 gives me, you know, plus 0, basically, or minus 0. And then I have minus 3, okay? So this is just, of course, 0 minus 3. And if I have zero dollars and I take away three dollars, I will be in debt by three dollars. Okay, so this output becomes negative three. Right. Now, when x is one, we just plug in one in here and here for x. Right. So we have one squared. One squared is one times one. That's one. M minus two times one is minus two, and then minus three. Okay. When you have this situation, 1 minus 2 minus 3, you can calculate this going from left to right, or you can remember that subtraction can be written plus negative. So if you wanted to do it that way, you would go, um, well, I'll tell you what, we'll go from left to right first of all. If I go from left to right, so I'll write that there here, left to right on this calculation, okay, um, oh, by the way, something I forgot, to, I forgot to mention is PEMDAS. We're calculating here, so we need to remember our, our order of operations, PEMDAS. So we start with parentheses, and we don't have anything to calculate inside the parentheses. But then we do exponents. So we did the exponent on the 0 first, 0 squared. The exponent on the 1 gave 1. Then we do multiplication next. So we multiply the negative 2 times 1. And this, the, you know, the, this, the our order was fine. For this so we didn't make a mistake but in any case be be mindful of PEMDAS if, if you're confused as to what to do and you always need to go from left to right as well so you go from left to right and do PEMDAS right in any case um, 
1 minus 2, $1 take away $2 is negative 1. Then minus 3, what have we got? Well, we're in debt $1, so we have negative 1. Then we take away 3, now we're in debt by 4, okay? And the other way to say to do it is, okay, think of this subtraction as plus negative, here and here. So I have 1 plus negative 2 plus negative 3. One good guy, two bad guys, that makes one bad guy, and then three bad guys makes four bad guys altogether, okay? So in any case, you'd have negative 4 here. So when x is 2, this should be 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 3. And following PEMDAS, I do my... Um, exponent on the 2, 2 squared is 2 times 2, 4, minus 2 times 2, minus 4, minus 3. Then if I go from left to right, 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 take away 3, once again, negative 3, right? So this is negative 3. So please calculate for an input of 3, what is the output? So calculate this, please press pause and do this one. Okay, now I'll do it. If x is 3, I put 3 here and here. 3 squared gives 9. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, and then minus 3. Nine, if I go from left to right now, 9 minus 6 is 3, so I have 3 minus 3, and that is 0. Or if you did, you know, plus negative, you'd have 9 good guys, 6 bad guys, and 3 bad guys, that's 0. No bad guys, all to, no guys altogether. <clears throat> and the output of there is 0. So when x is negative 3, for example, we have negative 3 all squared is the first thing we need to deal with because we're calculating this. So we're doing PEMDAS, we do exponents first. Now negative 3 all squared is negative 3 times negative 3, okay? And this is minus 2 times negative 3. If you want, you can change that to plus negative. It says now plus negative 2 times negative 3, so that's a plus. Uh, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6, so you got plus 6, and then minus 3, okay? Now negative 9 times negative 9 is, or sorry, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So I have 9 plus 6 minus 3, and if I go from left to right, you know, 9 and 6 is 15, and 15 minus 3 is 12, right? So that's that. So I mean, the, the, you, it's so easy to make a mistake on these. So please take your time and go through it step by step and make sure you don't make a mistake. Okay, if, if input is negative 2, I go negative 2 all squared minus 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 all squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Okay, then I've got minus 2 times minus 2, that's a plus 4, and then minus 3. So negative 2 times negative 2 gives me positive 4, and then plus 4 minus 3. And going from left to right, that's 4 and 4 is 8, and 8 minus, you know, so 8 and 8 minus 3 is 5. Okay, so press pause on the video, and please calculate this for an input of negative 1. Okay, now I'll do it. So you plug negative 1 here and here, and you should have got negative 1 all squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 minus 3, so that gives me 3 minus 3, which is 0. So this should be 0, okay? And one thing to note about these outputs you might have noticed is that we have some sort of symmetry happening here. We have negative 4 here, then negative 3, negative 3, 0, 0. And sure enough, the next output should be 5 here and here. So what I'm telling you is that this output should be 5. If the input is 4, the output should be 5 because it's, it's symmetric, see? And if this input is 5, this output should be 12 and so on. So let's just check that to see if that is indeed the case. So if my input was 4, my output would be 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3. So please calculate that. Take, a, take your 4 and plug it in here and here. Okay. 4 squared, of course, is 16. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8, and then minus 3. Now, 16 minus 8 gives me 8, and 8 minus 3 is 5. So we do indeed have an output of 5 here. And the same will work with, if your input is 5, you'll have, you know, 5 squared minus 2 times 5 minus 3. You'll have 25 minus 10 minus 3. That's uh, 15 minus 3, and that is indeed 12 here as well. So... We we will um, most of these will have a, a symmetri symmetrical outputs like this. Okay, 
so to graph these guys, we have inputs x and outputs y, and we can make the ordered pairs x, y, like that. Okay. Now, if the input is negative 3 and the output is 12, I go to negative 3 on the x-axis. It's right here, negative 3. And I go to 12 on the y-axis. And 10 is there, so 11, 12, it's about there, right? Then I get negative 2, 5, where x is negative 2, y is 5, is about there. And can you find negative 1, 0? Where is negative 1, 0? Is it here? Right? How about 0, negative 3? Find 0, negative 3. x is 0, go to 0 on the x-axis, y is negative 3, so that's there, isn't it? How about 1, negative 4? x is 1, y is negative 4, 1, negative 4, and um, just press pause and do the rest of these points. Okay, now I'll do them. So we should have point, uh, let's see, 2, negative 3, and 3, 0, and 4, 5, and 5, 12 is, is all the way up here again. Okay. So our points are in this funny pattern like that, which we haven't ever seen before. And what we have to be mindful of is the fact that it is, you know, th this, is now, this is not a graph of a straight line. We've seen graphs of straight lines where the points are all in one line. You just draw a line through all the points. This is a graph of a parabola. And you're supposed to join them up with a nice curve that goes like this. Okay, It's a parab parabolic curve. Now, what we do not do is join the points up with corners, straight line here to here and here to here, and make all these sharp corners. This is incorrect. That's not the correct graph. The correct graph is a parabola, okay? So, um, and, and the reason that we, we don't join them up with straight lines is because, I guess, if, if we just give you one example, if I plugged in, say, 0 0.5 here, into the equation, I would have <clears throat> 0 0.5 all squared minus 2 times 0 0.5 minus 3. 0 0.5 all squared gives me 0 0.25, and then minus 2 times 0 0.5, that's minus 1, and then minus 3. So this gives me a negative 0 0.75 minus 3 gives me a negative 3.75. Okay. So if my input was 0.5, what I'm saying, and my output was negative 3.75, where would this point be? 0 0.5 and negative 3.75. X is 0.5, and the output is negative 3.75. Now, this is, if you look at your y-axis, this is negative 3 on the y-axis, okay? Negative 4 is here. Negative 3.75, 0 0.5, and negative 3. This point is actually down here, okay? So it's it's almost to negative 4, which kind of implies that, look, look how these lines, wouldn't these points join up as a curve then? You, you don't draw a straight line. I mean, what I'm trying to say is you do not connect these two points with a straight line because you have another point that, that pulls them down to make a nice curve here. Okay, so so th this point pulls it down to make a nice parabolic curve, and it must curve back up. So what I'm saying is, if if I actually went to the trouble of plugging in a whole bunch of decimals, like you know 0 0.5, and if I plugged in 1.5, and maybe even you know 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, and all these uh, tons of inputs instead of just whole numbers, okay and, you know, 1.5, all sorts of decimals into the input, like, you know, 3.2, 3.4, 3.6. If I put in a whole bunch of decimals in, in for the x values, I would actually get a whole bunch of points as outputs, and the, these points would form a perfect uh, parabolic curve. Okay, and they would, they would go down here, and they go all the way around, and then they go all the way back up. And so if you, if you join up all these, if you, if you plugged in a whole bunch of decimals, you'd have a whole bunch of points that would make it a, a para, 
parabolic curve, a parabola. Okay. Okay, now it goes all the way up there forever, and it goes all the way in this direction forever as well. Okay. Now what we need to know about a the, the shape sorry, the shape is a parabola. We'll write that down. So it's, it's a parabola, not a straight line. We, we've seen straight line graphs before, now we're looking at parabolas. Now the thing to notice about a parabola is that this keeps going up and up and up and up and up forever. And it keeps going out and out and out and out and out forever as well. It doesn't turn back in. So, you know, this it keeps going up and up and up and up and up. It doesn't stop. It goes up, 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 and it keeps going out. And so it keeps basically going out and up, if you know what I mean. It doesn't ever turn. It doesn't ever turn back in. It never. It never goes back in like that. So don't ever graph it like that. And on this side, it keeps going up and up and up and up and up, and on and on and on. And, and you know, it goes out in that direction and up. So it doesn't ever turn back inside on itself again. So don't ever do this. Make sure you don't have your parabolas turning back inside. That would be an error. Okay. So in example three, we have y equals four x minus x squared. So to graph this, we first make an x, y table or an input output table. And I would suggest, you know, start at negative 3 and go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, <coughs> 2, 3. And get these outputs. And if you need some more, you may need some more. And if you do, we'll, we'll get some more afterwards. So um, if we plug in, say, negative 3, the output is going to be 4 times negative 3 minus negative 3 all squared. So wherever you see an x, you put a parenthesis. There's an x here, so we need two parentheses. So for this one, negative 3 would be plugged in here and here. And I suggest that you just go all the way down and just go 4 times parenthesis minus parenthesis squared, 4 times parenthesis minus parenthesis squared, and just keep going all the way down the page. Okay, so when we're plugging in our x, our inputs, our x's, we um, got we have to plug in negative two here and here. Then we plug in negative one here and here. Plug in zero here and here. Plug in one, then plug in two, and then plug three in for x. Okay, and then calculate each one one at a time. So let's start with with zero. Four times zero is zero. And zero and zero squared is zero, so zero minus zero, right? Which is zero. So we have that output. Okay. So um, press pause and get all these outputs. Output for one, two, and three. So press pause and get these outputs. Okay. Now I'll do it. This should be four times one is four minus one squared is one four minus one is three. So that output is three. This is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. Oh, also, remember, we should really be following PEMDAS, which says do the exponents first and then multiply. So we should have done the exponent on this and got 4, and then went 4 times 2 is 8, and now subtract, and we get 4. So this output here is 4. And then for this one, we should do exponent on 3 is 9, and 4 times 3 is 12, so 12 minus 9 is 3. Okay, so with the negatives, um, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Oh, sorry, we should have followed PEMDAS once again. My mistake. Negative 3 all squared, you see, is negative 3 times negative 3, which makes positive 9, right? Now, this subtract sign just stays here. This subtract sign is not part of, the parent of, of this part. We have to square the negative 3 first. We have to follow PEMDAS, square the negative 3 to get positive 9, and now add in this negative, okay? Now, um, this negative does not get plugged in. Like, for example, if you have minus negative 3 all squared, you cannot make that a plus plus. That is incorrect. We can't do that because we need to do the exponent first and the negative 3 to get 9, and then subtract. So we can't make that a plus plus, right? So in any case, 
4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12, so we have negative 12 minus 9, which is in debt $12, subtract $9, now you're in debt by 21, right? So this output is negative 21. And then to do this one, first of all, we do the exponent on this. The exponent on negative 2 squared, and if you want to write out, that, see, that's negative 2 times negative 2, right? So what we have actually is 4 times negative 2 makes negative 8. So I have negative 8 minus negative 2 times negative 2, see? So I have negative 8 minus. Now this negative 2 times negative 2 makes a positive 4. So I have minus 8, or negative 8 minus 4, which gives me negative 12, right? And so on. So press, so, so let's do this one now. If the input is negative 1, okay? Four, oh sorry, we need to do the exponent first. The exponent of negative 1 gives a positive 1. If you want, you can write like this. It's negative 1 times negative 1. This exponent makes it parenthesis times parenthesis. Negative 1 times negative 1. And then we have, you know, 4 times negative 1 here is a negative 4 minus that. Now this negative 1 times negative 1 makes a positive 1. So I have a negative 4 minus 1, which gives negative 5. Okay. So this output is negative 5. And um, so, so we're, we're doing well. So we can go ahead and uh, plot these points. So these ordered pairs are x, comma, y. Now the first one, negative 3, negative 21, x is negative 3. Y is negative 21 is all the way down here somewhere, all the way down the end of the page. So let's not worry about that one. But negative 2, negative 12, negative 2, negative 12 is just um, about here, isn't it? And then we have negative 1, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5 is about here. And then you pl plot the rest of the points. 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 3. You need to plot all these points, right? So press pause and plot those. So we have 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 3. Okay, so it's a funny one. We haven't got the full parabola yet. And it seems like, it should seem like to you that, you know, it is, it is indeed curving up. Okay, it's curving up, curving up and around up and around, and then it looks like it's going back down again. So if we want to get more of these points, what do you think we should do? If you want to get more of the points here. So, you know, so parabola looks like it's going, it, it should go down this way. So to get more points down here, um, we one, one thing we could do is, is plug in uh, more x values into the table. So you know, you want to get points over here, so you might want to plug in where x is 4, see? Where x is 4, and then try and find what point corresponds to that. So if you plug x is 4, you go 4 times x minus x squared, and x is 4, so we plug that in. And we get um, 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 minus 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. So we have 4, 0. So here's another point, right? And then to get uh, where x is 5, it'll be 4 times 5 minus 5 squared, and that's 20 uh, minus 25, which is negative 5. And so you should have 5, negative 5. So x is 5, y is negative 5, and there we go. And you also might have spotted the pattern. In this case, our parabola has, you know, our, our, our integer inputs are giving us symmetric points on the parabola. Here, 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 and here, and all the way out here will be another one, okay? So, if you, you might have noticed that, so that, that's that's useful too to notice that. So, in any case, we can just connect the, the points up with a nice curve, nice parabola, and put an arrow here to indicate that it keeps going on and on down forever and ever and ever. It doesn't stop. It keeps going down, 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 okay? And just also remember that it, it, it uh, it goes down and it ne it goes so it it goes out in that direction and down basically right so I mean because it's going out and down and here it's going out as well so it never t turns back in here so don't ever have your curve turning in and it doesn't turn back in here either right so don't ever have your curve turning in and uh, so that's example two.
Now example 3 is y equals 7 minus 6x minus x squared. So please try and graph this yourself. So press pause on the video and try and graph it yourself and see how far you get. And then, um, you know, keep watching the video to, to pick up on any mistakes or confusions. So I, there's a few, there's a couple of things we haven't seen in this yet. So um, just, just do your best with it anyway, okay? So press pause and, and try it anyway. So you hopefully you've set it up like this where every everywhere you see an X you put a parenthesis. Okay. And so if you set it up like this, then we just need to plug in the numbers. So hopefully we've just plugged in the numbers and I'll just help you out with some calculations. This would be a seven. And then if I follow my order order of operations uh PEMDAS oops, PEM DAS, I need to do um exponents first see and then multiply so an exponent on negative 3 negative 3 all squared is actually positive 9 and we still have this subtract sign here okay and now negative 6 times negative 3 is a positive 18 so I have 7 plus 18 minus 9 and if I go from left to right add from and subtract from, from left to right 7 plus 18 is 25 25 minus 9 leaves me with uh, 4, or no, sorry, 16, isn't it? Right. So this first output here should be 16. Okay, and then the next one you'll have um, negative 2 all squared gives me 4. This subtract stays here. I'm following PEMDAS. Now I have 7, and then negative 6 times negative 2 is plus 12. And now I need to go always go from left to um, right when you're calculating. So 7 and 12 is 19. 19 minus 4 is 15. Um, right, so this should be correct. 15 here. Probably. So just press pause on the video and calculate the rest of the outputs for this one. Okay, so press pause and, and try it. So you should have 12, 7, 0, negative 9, and negative 20. Okay. Um, I'll just do I'll just do 12 at least to show you where that comes from. Well, this is uh, if I do the the square a negative one, I get a positive one, and then if I put this subtraction in here, I get that. Um, if I if I multiply negative six times negative one, I get plus six, and the seven goes there. And then going from left to right, 7 plus 6 is 13. 13 minus 1 gives 12, right? So in any case, um, press pause and, or let's see. Yeah, press pause and plot these ordered pairs and see what you come up with. So plot the ordered pairs. Okay, now I'll do it. Well, if x is negative 3 and y is 16, that's... Um, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's about up here. If x is uh, negative 2 and y is 15, that is about here. If x is negative 1 and y is 12, that's about here. So we're going off the graph in this one, obviously. Sorry, whoops. You see that? Uh, if x is 0 and y is 7, that is here. If x is 1 and y is 0, 1, 0 is here. 2 negative 9 is here, and 3 negative 20 is all the way down here, all the way down down at the bottom. So we, we have these points, and um, I, I guess what do you do at this point, because it's hard to see, you know, we're supposed to get a parabola, so it's hard to see what's going on. Well, you might notice that, look, it, it seems to be, if, if you join these points up, you see, from the bottom, just go up here, okay, and then keep going up and up and up and up and up. It seems that it is curving around at this point, isn't it? So it seems the parabola is going over here, so you need more points over in this direction. So if I want more points over here, I might think about plugging in. Um, so this this was where x is negative 3. Well, I'm, let's plug in negative 4. If x is negative 4, what's the output, right? I plug negative 4 in. A, I will get 7 minus 6 um, <clears throat> times 
negative 4 minus negative 4 all squared. Okay, and then calculate that. So the 7 stays there. Now, I, I guess i got to do my squared first, following uh, PEMDAS. Negative 4 all squared is 16, and this subtract stays here, because I just have to square the negative 4. And then negative 6 times negative 4 is plus 24. So I have 7 and 24, which makes 31. 31 minus 16 gives me 15, right? So this output is 15. So here we have indeed negative 4, 15, which is about there. And then if I want to get more points over here, I should probably plug in, say, negative 5 on the x-axis. So plug in negative 5 and maybe even negative 6, right? And calculate these guys and see what you get. So 7 minus 6 times negative 5 minus negative 5 all squared. And whoops, it's in the way. 7 minus 6 times negative 6 minus negative 6 all squared. So plug in negative 5 and then plug in negative 6. And you can press pause on the video and see if you can calculate these correctly. Okay, now I'll do it. We, we have a negative 5 all squared is uh, 25. This subtraction stays here. We're just following PEMDAS. And we have 7. And negative 6 times negative 5 is plus 30. So that's 37 minus 25, which gives me 12. And then I've got um, negative 6 all squared is 36. So I have 7. Oh, and, and this subtraction stays here. And negative 6 times negative 6 is plus 36. So 7 plus 36 minus 36 ends up being, um, sorry, whoops, 7, right? So I have negative 5, 12, and negative 6. So negative 5, 12 is um, negative 5, 12 is about there. And negative 6, 7 is right about there. And so this parabola does indeed start coming down again, right? So, and once again, you have symmetric points. See the symmetric points? These ones, these ones, these ones. And you'll find if you plug negative seven in, and look, look how look how it how it's symmetric. It um the uh, let's see. Well, I guess, I guess we can't see the symmetry in the table because I put negative four, negative five, negative six down here. If I had to put it up here, we'd see the symmetry. But in any case, if I plug, uh, see it goes fifteen, twelve, seven. This should be zero. This should be zero. If I plug neg negative seven in, I have seven minus six times negative seven minus negative 7 all squared, which is 7 plus uh, 42 minus 49, which ends up being 49. In any case, 49 minus 49, which is 0, right? So if you plug negative 7 in, you get 0. So we have negative 7, 0 as well. So that comes down like that, right? Whoops. And in any case, it goes down and down and put an arrow here because it keeps going down forever. And it goes down this direction. And again, it goes down, down, and, and, and out at the same time, right?